And now it's time for another edition of What Would Jello Do? Yeah, the Supreme Court is finally going to become even more of what it has already been. Why do you think they put in cross-check to steal the election for senators and governors as well as whoever became president? It wasn't just for the big corporate tax giveaway. It was to make sure that there were nothing but religious fanatic right-wing criminals on the court. So now what do we do? In all likelihood, Trump is going to be able to get who he wants through. And there's got to be different ways to fight this. I mean, keep in mind that Anthony Kennedy was Ronald Reagan, that's how far he went back, his third choice for that court seat because Robert Bork lost in the Senate and then Douglas Ginsburg, who I suppose was picked in part because he had the same goofy beard as Bork, they found out he smoked marijuana. Oh, scandal. And people like Jesse Helms were saying, oh, that shouldn't matter. That's probably the only time he said that. And Newt Gingrich said, oh, yeah, I smoke pot once myself. It shouldn't be disqualified. That was a good laugh, but eventually Reagan had to nominate somebody who was less openly extreme, and we got Kennedy, who did some good things, as well as the so-called swing vote that handed the White House to George W. Bush, legalized bribery with Citizens United, and ruled with the corrupt extremists on pretty much everything for the last year or two or more. So, yes, the game is going to change. What happens when the court overturns Roe v. Wade, as they have wanted to do for so long? It's not automatically going to make abortion banned nationwide. The southern states and the extreme states are going to make more and more laws picking on women and choice and reproductive rights. It's going to be a state issue. You know, you think there's going to be a civil war one way. It's also going to be choice states versus anti-choice states. I can already see what the extremists call abortion mills popping up on the California eastern border, maybe Oregon, maybe Washington, maybe New York, Massachusetts, some of the others, where only people who can afford to travel there will be able to exercise their right to terminate a pregnancy unless they go underground and risk getting infected and dying and who knows what else. Some states are already trying to make it illegal to transport a person across a state line to have an abortion. That just drives it further underground into the rusty coat hanger area. So, I'm going to once again beg the pro-choice movement to completely switch tactics. I've been doing this for 20 years, taking note that the anti-choice extremists have long been pushing for a constitutional amendment to ban a woman's right to choose. They never succeeded. Why? Because every poll after poll after poll for 20, 30, maybe 40 years has said that 75% and higher of American citizens are pro-choice. As Frank Zappa put it, America likes to fuck. And so when this hits home, as it hopefully already is doing, then how about the choice movement push for, instead of a constitutional amendment banning abortions, a constitutional amendment protecting choice and women's reproductive rights and a person's right to choose what they do with their own bodies? That constitutional amendment may well have a better chance of passing than trying to overturn the Citizens United ruling where Anthony Kennedy helped legalize bribery and warp our elections. It's going to be long, it's going to be wild, it's going to be ugly, and it's going to be really dark for a lot of innocent women in the meantime. But long-term, constitutional amendment, guaranteeing choice, Three quarters of this country is pro-sex. This, we can get this done.